Hi, today we know about human African trypanosomiasis. It's also called as African sleeping sickness. Let's see life cycle of trypanosomiasis. The sickness occurs in two stages. In stage 1, symptoms begin with fever. The sleeping sickness cycle starts with a bite from a tetsi fly. If the fly bites someone who's already sick, it ingests parasites as well as blood. These parasites, called trypanosomes, accumulate in the fly's gut. 20 days later, they migrate to the tetsi fly's salivary glands and are ready to infect another victim when the fly next bites. When the parasite moves to a region covered by mucosa, the parasite reaches the mammalian bloodstream and subsequently invades different cell types that it encounters, such as macrophages, muscle cells, epithelial cells, and neurons. In this example, the attachment of the tripomastigote form of the parasite to the macrophage surface is observed. The process of internalization via phagocytosis begins with the formation of pseudopods. During and after the internalization of the parasite, the parasitophorous vacuole assembles. Host cell lysosomes migrate toward the internalization region and fuse with the parasitophorous vacuole. The lysosomal content is released in the vacuole. However, the parasite is not affected. In the vacuole, the tripomastigote transforms into an amastigote. This transformation is accompanied by the disruption of the parasitophorous vacuole membrane. The amastigotes are released into the cytoplasm of the host cell and divide multiple times. Observe how many amastigotes are accumulating through the division process. They can occupy the entire cytoplasm of the host cell. Following division, the amastigotes transform into tripomastigotes, which show intense and constant movement that culminates with their bursting out of the cell. The tripomastigotes reach the extracellular space and, subsequently, the bloodstream. The parasites will now infect new cells. In stage 2, the neurologic phase occurs when the parasite crosses the blood-brain barrier and infects the central nervous system. These first phase symptoms are sometimes too mild to be detected, but this is when it is actually easiest to treat the disease. If it isn't treated in time, the parasites advance to the brain. The blood-brain barrier is there, a filter to protect the brain against pathogens, toxins, and hormones circulating in the blood. But the trypanosomes breach it. At this stage, the disease is much more difficult to treat, as the blood-brain barrier also blocks some drug molecules. If the trypanosomes manage to enter into the brain, the sleep pattern becomes erratic. Infected people develop poor coordination and become confused, alternating between episodes of severe fatigue and agitation. Sleeping during the day, they can't sleep at night. The deterioration of the nervous system leads to coma. Left untreated, sleeping sickness is fatal. Let's see trypanosoma how it looks in microscopy. Fresh thin blood film with trypanosome swimming between the red blood cells. Trypanosoma brucei in mammalian blood. Trypanosoma brucei in blood microscopy. Let's see very short history about sleeping sickness. In 1374, 
the gravely ill Sultan of Mali fell into a torpor from which he would never recover. His death was the first to be attributed to what would become known as sleeping sickness. Between the 14th and 19th centuries, sleeping sickness became increasingly common. At the end of the 19th century, the first major epidemic struck Uganda and the Congo Basin. Historians believe one million people died. Meanwhile, colonization, which resulted in deforestation, road construction, and population displacements, all contributed to the spread of the disease. In 1901, English biologists Ford and Dutton identified in patients' blood the cause of the disease, a parasite called the trypanosome. In 1903, a British physician, David Bruce, discovered the vector of the parasite, the tsetse fly. In 1905, tests were performed on the first treatment, atoxyl, a highly toxic arsenic compound that can cause blindness. At the beginning of the 1920s, colonial medicine attempted to eradicate the disease. Eugène Jameau, a French military doctor and director of the Pasteur Institute in Brazzaville, laid the foundations for what came to be called Jameau's Doctrine, identifying and treating all possible cases to eliminate the reservoir of parasites in humans. Armed with microscopes, he and his mobile teams traveled to the remotest of regions, seeking out patients they then treated with arsenic derivatives. In Cameroon, between 1919 and 1930, Chemo's doctrine brought down prevalence, meaning the percentage of the population with the disease, from 60% to 4%. In 1949, Swiss chemist Ernst Friedheim came up with the idea of combining an arsenic derivative with an antagonist used against arsenic-based gases during World War II. His drug, Malarsoprol, is still used, albeit rarely, in the advanced stage of the disease. In the 1960s, as the colonizers departed from most of the affected countries, interest in the disease declined and the tsetse fly reappeared. An epidemic broke out in 1970 and reached its peak in 1998. Efforts made since have seriously reduced the number of cases and the World Health Organization has set itself the objective of eradicating sleeping sickness by 2020. Give support to me by subscribe my YouTube channel. Do check out my video and subscribe to my channel, I would like to hear your feedback.